Pinterest has a competitive advantage that very few other companies can compete with. Pinterest is arguably the front runner in visual discovery and more specifically bookmarking, which frankly speaking doesn't sound that exciting until you figure out how to combine that with selling products. And this is where Pinterest is really starting to shine. The R&D and the huge development budgets that are going into the back end of this tech is something that I think is going to be a huge potential catalyst in the future for Pinterest versus all the other competitors. But of course, any investment today has to be based on today's set of financials. It has to be based on the most recent fundamentals. And this is why Darwin and I created Stockscreen.app. It is a game-changing application for stock market investors. It allows you to see the most recent financials for any company, allows you to look at a simple scoring system that helps you determine whether a company has value, and most importantly, allows you to do value calculations. So with that said, let's take a look at Pinterest. If you haven't already done so, go to stockscreen.app and sign up and join that early waiting list. Uh, you can find the link in the description down below as well as in the link card up above. So let's take a look at uh, Pinterest and let's see exactly how the company has been doing. Let's have a look at those fundamentals and those financials. So the stock is currently trading at 27.48. And if we just quickly move the slider back and look at the historicals, uh, the stock was trading up at one point above $80. It of course has fallen back quite sharply. And uh, this of course, the madness of this pricing was back in the height of the pandemic, 2020 leading into 2021. And then it fell back quite sharply it has gone down as low as uh, 16 and then currently up at uh, 2748. So let's have a look at the market cap. We're sitting on 18.64 billion enterprise value, 13.23 billion uh, P ratio, very high at 305.33. Now, if we quickly have a look at our financial overview, the revenue is sitting at 2.7 billion. Uh, that's of course trailing 12 month revenue and debt, most recent quarter sitting at 183.24 million. Equity sitting at 3.14 billion. Net income sitting at 61.16 million. Cash on hand, 2.67 billion and free cash flow sitting at 591 million. Looking at our shares outstanding, we've got 669 Point one seven million shares outstanding. Insiders hold 0 0.86, and there is a growing short out against the stock, 4.76%, with uh, institutional holdings sitting at 89.13%. Now, if we move down very quickly and have a look at our cash flow statements, uh, we can see that they have been under pressure. Uh, operating cash flow 657, 28. Point, uh, 657 thousand up to 28.83 million up to 752.91 million falling back to 622 free cash flows were negative 33.1 uh, up to positive 11.43 74 743.8 uh, and then 591.06 now if we move across just quickly and have a look at our balance sheet we can see they've actually done pretty well on the balance sheet assets have gone 2.3 2.6 3.5 and then 3.69 billion. So very good growth on the asset. Equity has gone 2.02, 2.24, 3.04 and 3.14. Then if we look at the income statement, top line revenue has been pretty good. 1.14, 1.69, 2.58, 2.77. So consistent growth on top line. And in terms of the gross profit, it kept pace. 783, 1.24, 2.05, and 2.14. And I do need to point out, if you have a look at the revenue versus gross profit, they've got exceptionally good margins on the gross profit. Uh, operating income, they went negative 1.39, 142 negative, uh, 326 positive, 71.9 positive. Uh, net income, they went 1.3 negative, 128, 3.16, 61 positive. Now looking at the earnings per share, not that great, negative 2.42, negative 0 0.19, positive 0 0.46, positive 0 0.09. So still very, very thin on the earnings per share. And shares outstanding, 562, 689, 690, 669. So a little bit of a pullback on the shares outstanding in the trailing 12 months. Now, if we have a look at these fundamentals very quickly, the P ratio is sitting at three or five, so definitely way out of where we're comfortable. Net margin, uh, 2.21, so below our re requirement, our benchmark, normally 10%. Uh, net equity is positive, but there has been shareholder dilution. So this gives them a score of 25. 
5.5%. Looking at the debt, they're scoring very, very well. Uh, debt to equity, 5.83%, so they adequately cover their debt position. Current ratio in terms of short-term debt, 9.46, so very good coverage there. And free cash flow to debt, 149%, so exceptional coverage there. Uh, look at the momentum, strong momentum over the last uh, three reporting periods. Top line, uh, middle line, and bottom line revenue all looking phenomenal. And then if we look at the growth factor, 25%. So return on asset came in at 2%. Uh, return on uh, sorry return on invested capital rather and asset coming at two percent return on invested capital 12.18 and if we look at the earnings per share uh, obviously not that great so they're not scoring there but 25 percent on growth uh, as one would expect uh, looking at the momentum and growth uh, we are anticipating that growth would be the one area that we start to see at least some result improvement and then just very quickly if we look at our uh, overall scoring 25 percent on uh, the fundamentals debt uh, looking very strong at 100 percent momentum strong at 100 percent and growth like i say still looking for some of those results to 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 really turn into uh, positives uh, so growth is one area they definitely could do better and then of course on the key fundamentals but debt and momentum have been standouts for them and then if we look at the analyst ratings on the stock quickly we've got one sell rating 20 hold ratings and four buy ratings so an overwhelming hold consensus from the analysts and looking at our valuation metrics uh, we look at a price to book of five price to sell of 6.16 and price to free cash flow 31.53 so exceptionally high on uh, the p ratio and i would say on the high side for price to free cash flow so of course this leads us into some kind of value calculations to determine what the specific value could be so we of course going to start with free cash flow purely because i think the price to free cash flow is probably a little bit out of sync and uh, just to indicate that this probably wouldn't be the calculation i use especially since the company is still aggressively deploying capital so if we look at uh, the low side um five on the high side if we went 10 uh, on the medium side rather 10 on the high side 15 we'd be coming out to a price today of 883 uh, and of course that is way 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 below uh, the current valuation about 67 percent so definitely on the free cash flows i'd say they are overvalued uh, even if we went very very high on these valuations which i don't think pinterest justifies these valuations uh, if we went 20 uh, 25 and on the high side 30 then i would say that uh, you're probably going to see a valuation a little bit closer but still definitely far off the mark so 2208 still about 20 percent overvalued based on the free cash flow so this leaves us with no alternative but to look purely at the dcf model so looking at the dcf model now growth rates predicted out are pretty aggressive for pinterest at the moment uh, some analysts looking at about 16 percent we of course are going to be a lot more cautious we're going to go three six and nine on our growth rates uh, fair target P ratio, even though I am extremely uncomfortable with that P ratio of 305, we're going to stick with it uh, based on the current valuation metrics. And that brings us out to an average buy price today of 2197, which indicates that the stock is still potentially about 20% overvalued. So even if we go more aggressive on this, let's say we go to six, uh, let's say we go to nine, and let's say we go to 13 on our growth factors and uh, that would bring us out to a price of 24.86 still indicating that the stock is potentially about 10 percent overvalued so for me personally even though i think pinterest has got a lot of competitive advantage i think they're doing a lot of things right for me personally the price points just don't make sense the entry price point has got to be a lot lower than where it currently is at and even though i think the market has discounted a lot in at the current pricing i just don't feel it's enough and that is one of the reasons why pinterest definitely isn't on my buy list so i'd love to know if you're currently invested why you're currently invested and more importantly what your potential price points are for entries and exits let me know in the comment section down below and also if you are new to this channel if this is one of your first times joining us here uh, and you are interested for honest logical discussions around stocks that are fact-based rather than purely opinion based then you definitely want to go and hit that subscribe button we release a video like this every single day and of course money tribe you know what i'm going to ask you guys to do please hit that like button it really does help us with the youtube algorithm and as always if you haven't yet signed up stockscreen.app we're releasing it very soon and we're only going to be notifying people on the waiting list so if you're not on the waiting list you're not going to get notified so make sure you go to stockscreen.app a link is in the description down below